Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he here. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Coming in from behind. You didn't expect that, probably because I'm coming in from the. So if I look at my monitor, I'm coming in from the left all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back in Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar today and you see I'm teaching a few classes once again this semester and well one of those are the IT boys mathematics for the IT boys and girls there are like five girls in the class that's quite astonishing of a number and well one of the things we had to show on some homework was Cantor's theorem, which is basically stating that for some finite set n, the cardinality of the power set of n is always strictly greater than the cardinality of the set itself. And back when I was a first year, this was just the fucking most retarded proof I've ever seen because it just blew my mind and I couldn't make sense of it. I hope I can make sense of this proof for you today. Kant's theorem, <laughs> we are going to get started. So to show this right here, we are going to assume that there's a bijection at the moment but between the power set and our set n right here. So let's just formulate some kind of mapping. We are going to call it f for example, being just a mapping from n to the power set of n. And at first we want to see if there's an injection between those two. It's really quite easy to show, so why not Say we have a sample mapping from x to all the sets which include x. And well, that's definitely an injection. We can just try it out. So if we take f of x1 and we set it equal to f of x2, well, by this mapping right here, we also know that this is just the set which has x1 in it being equal to the set which has x2 in it. And we know if we take a look at my set theory video that two sets are exactly equal if the entries are equal. So we can also say that x1 is definitely equal to x2. So there's already an injection between those two sets right here. Meaning at the moment that if there would be a bijection that the cardinality of the power set of n is greater or equal to the cardinality of the set itself. But we want to get rid of this equal relationship because our theorem states that this cardinality is always strictly greater than the cardinality of the set itself. To get rid of this equal part we have to get rid of the bijection we have assumed at first. Meaning we want to prove that there is no surjection right here between n and the power set of n. At the moment we are going to assume that there is indeed a surjection of f. So assume f is surjective. But what does surjective actually mean? Well it just means that for all elements out of this power set, we can find some element right here in the set such that the image of this element in the set n is exactly in here, in this p of n, in this power set. Meaning formally that for all, let's say y, element of the power set of n, there is some x element of, I don't know, n such that, well, we have f of x being equal to y. What does that mean exactly? We can rewrite this a little bit because this just here states that whatever x we take in here, the image of this x is always going to be in our power set right here. So this equivalently, equivalently just means that, well, for all x element of n, what do we get? Well, f of x is element of the power set of n. It does make sense actually. But what does it mean for something to be element of the power set? Well, this just means that this f of x is a subset of our n because, well, the power set is just a set of all subsets. So this right here is equivalent to saying that for all x element of n, we have that f of x is a subset of our n right here. And we want to disprove this statement right here. So what we want to do, we want to construct ourselves a subset 
of our n such that this subset isn't in the image of f. So this is the plan right here and we are going to continue with the Kanto diagonal set. What exactly is the Kanto? No, he's been a German boy so we are going to go with Kanto in a German manner. So what exactly is the Kanto diagonal set? It's a matter of construction. We are going to construct it as follows. We are going to denote it as CD. I don't know, compact disk? No, <laughs> that's completely wrong. A compact disk is something completely different. In mathematics, it's nothing but all the X element of our set N such that, well, X is not in the image of F. And certainly this thing right here is a subset of N because, well, all the elements in our compact disk, in our Cantor diagonal set, are indeed contained in N and that's the definition of something being a subset. So that's already good. So this thing is part of the, um, part of the image of F right here. It's element of our set of all subsets, the power set. Recall what it means for N to be a surjection, namely that for all a Y, element of the power set, there, there is some x element of n such that, well, f of x is nothing but y. And we can restrict this a bit further because certainly, since this right here is a subset, it's also element of our power set, meaning that if we just rephrase this using our CD right here, then this right here has to hold this law. So we can find some x we have to find some x if this thing is a surjection, this f, such that this right here holds. Also recall something different, the law of the excluded middle. That's what it's called in English. <laughs> I sometimes have to think about uh, what the German words mean in English and the other way around. Sometimes I just don't find the German words and then I'm saying them in, in English it's such a curse. Okay. So what's the law of the excluded middle? It's an excluding or statement about sets, namely that either some element is in a set or some element is not in a set. Namely, for all sets we have that either x is element of CD or x is not element of CD. And this thing wouldn't be a proper set if this right here wouldn't hold. We are still striving for contradiction to find out that this f right here is not a surjection at all. So why not check both cases? Let's assume that x is element of our Cantor diagonal set. If x is element of CD, well, what does that mean? Then it means that this x is element of CD, but by this law, it also means that our x is not in the image of f of x, meaning it's also not element of CD and that's the real mind blow which just was so fucked up when I first started university. So this right here immediately implies that X is not element of CD. But what happens if we take a look at the second part that X is not element of CD? Well this right here implies if X is not in the image of F well, then it's certainly element of the Cantor diagonal set because it satisfies this condition right here. Hey, so X is definitely element of CD. But this statement right here implies this statement and this statement right here implies this statement, meaning overall that X is element of CD is equivalent to saying that X is not element of CD. And this is a contradiction because this thing right here states that is that X is element of the image and it is not element of the image. But this works against our law of the excluded, excluded middle. Meaning overall, I know it's quite hard to grasp probably, that our F is not a surjection. Meaning overall that we are going to get rid of this greater or equal relationship to just a strictly greater relationship. This right here has been a contradiction to our statement that F is a surjection, meaning overall that the cardinality of the power set of N is indeed strictly greater than the cardinality of N. And then we are done. There was a loud clap. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you've got any questions regarding this proof, just leave some comments down below. Maybe I can answer them.
Lovely guys, appreciate ya. Don't forget to activate the bell button and share those videos everywhere. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. Going out to the right, cheer. Such.